Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you for this December 4th, 2013 edition. Tonight, the House trembles in fear at plastic guns, while Florida cops fear the dreaded Guy Fawkes mask. Could it be because our money is about to vaporize like Detroit pensions? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline, mother of Sandy Hook victim, background checks wouldn't have prevented tragedy. And she's telling the Lord's truth right there, because as we all know, regardless of what you think about the official story of Sandy Hook, Adam Lanza supposedly stole his firearm from somebody who was a legal gun owner, killed them, murdered them, for the firearm and then went and uh, committed his massacre. So she is telling the truth that, you know, he stole it from a legal gun owner. So how would a background check have prevented this uh, very unfortunate tragedy? And I definitely respect her. I'm pretty sure she's caught a lot of flack from the people in the uh, anti-gun movement. But thank you, Nicole Hockley, for your bravery in speaking out on this issue. Now, just like this brave woman spoke out, we need to speak out because now we have this. The House is really worried about 3D printed guns. So much it voted to ban them. Now, this is an extension of the Undetectable Firearms Act, which coincides with the National Firearm Act that the ATF is trying to push. And this is coming up on December 9th. And later on in the show, we'll be talking to printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson, who's going to tell you about all this stuff. So be sure that you do not miss that interview. And moving on to more police state measures, Florida cop arrested for wearing Guy Fox mask at Obamacare rally. You can't have somebody actually having freedom in this country. And this is the story of Erickson Harrell, age 39. He's a police officer. He was protesting Obamacare and he had a he had an upside down flag. And he was asked by the police to remove his mask and identify himself. He refused multiple times and was arrested. I'm not exactly sure what the laws are in Florida, but in the state of Oklahoma, if you're asked to identify yourself by an officer, you're supposed to do it if the officer has reasonable cause to come and suspect that you have some wrongdoing. Wearing a mask or holding a sign and being at an anti-Obamacare rally is not a crime. And you can see this footage that we shot. Now, this isn't that particular rally. This is some uh, stock B-roll footage that we had. But a guy was wearing a mask just like this, peaceably assembling, just like you see these guys doing here. And the police came up and said, hey, uh, you're going to tell us who you are or you're going to jail. And the guy said, fine, I'll go to jail. And this is what we're talking about. When we talk about police, military, you're not immune to this. Just like every week I go out to the uh, the state capitol building and see DPS uh, arresting lawful legal gun owners, just like when the guys went to Dallas for the JFK memorial service and people were arrested out there, people were harassed, physically assaulted by the Dallas Sheriff's Department. And this is what happens. So keep in mind, when we say that you're not immune from this, police, military, remember this, keep this in mind because it could be you very well someday when you stop going along with this police state propaganda. Vaporized. Detroit obliterates retirement funds, 80% cuts to pensioners. This is going to affect everyone. So my question to the city of Detroit, uh, the mayor, the city council, are you guys taking any pay cuts up there? Because I've seen situations like this. Back before I worked here at InfoWars, I was working for Tulsa County, and the lady said, uh, the HR lady said, excuse me, son, do you want to sign up for the retirement plan? And I was like, no, I don't want to sign up for a retirement plan. Because even at that time, mainstream media, I believe it was on 60 Minutes, did a story about a gentleman who worked as a firefighter, and then he had to go back after his retirement and become a mall cop because there's no money to pay him his pension. So I knew that, well, maybe that lady will get her retirement fund someday, but I knew I wouldn't get mine. So uh, if you're in that kind of situation, I'd suggest you hold on to your money and invest it in something worthwhile. And also, uh, I guess, just not be a sucker to the system because it will burn you in the end. And speaking of getting burned, IRS vulnerable to fraud with Obamacare health subsidies. And we've seen Obama lie about this again and again and again. But now people are saying it's OK if he lies as long as he has a good heart. All Americans know politicians lie. The question is, which lies can you live with? And time and time again, Americans have said we can deal with the lies that President Obama tells us because we believe in his heart. He has the best interest for the American people. Every president is going to lie to you. Every politician is going to lie to you. The question is, which lies can you live with? Elsie, I think it's really sad that we're sitting here having this debate, and you're, you're, at least you're willing to admit the president lied to the American people. 
it's okay if he lies to you. You should just go along with it, and that's that's the way it is in this country. Another thing that's it's just the way it is is the TSA. But we have this article: TSA claim debunked. Photo proof agency searches cards, and you can see it right there on your screen. You can go and read this full article from Kurt Nimmo, but definitely take a look right there. It's right there. It's right there. You know, you don't have to believe us. You don't have to go to quote conspiracy sites. It's right there on that sign. But a site that you definitely want to check out is Infowars.com because we have the 10K film contest for the TSA and the NSA. You can go out there and see the full contest rules. You need to have all your submissions in by January 7th, 2014. Be sure to follow the rules or you won't win, but it's definitely a great way to get the word out and also get a little coin in your pocket. And it's something that you can do to put coin in our pocket is become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. You can get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Special Reports, the Rants, and so much more right there at PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned after this break for more Special Reports and also my interview with printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. And welcome back. Today's Tyranny Watch has eyes on Iceland's peaceful revolution and also low crime rates. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch. Well, you won't hear the mainstream media supporting the Second Amendment. In fact, they say that guns are bad. You may have heard about the NFL not allowing the Daniel Defense rifle commercial. So I've chosen the most effective tool for the job. Daniel Defense. The fact is, if you go out of our media stratosphere and tune in on Iceland, all the theories of gun control go out the window. On Monday, for the first time in the nation's history, the Iceland police fired a shot at a citizen during an operation. Most cops don't even carry guns. The homicide rate in Iceland in 2009 was one. The only officers who carry firearms are on a special force called the Viking Squad, and they're rarely used. And out of 325,000 people, 90,000 are registered gun owners. Crimes in Iceland don't usually involve guns. There's not a huge division in economic classes in Iceland. 97% of the people consider themselves upper middle class, lower middle class, or working class. So strife between them is nearly non-existent. 
The other thing you won't hear from our mainstream media is that people in Iceland demanded their country back. They took their country back from the government and they did it peacefully. After unscrupulous bankers bankrupted Iceland's banks in 2008, the citizens took the streets by the thousands, banging pots and pans in what is known as the Pots and Pans Revolution which led to the arrest of the bankers, and Icelandic citizens rejected any measures of taxation to bail the bankers out. The citizens demanded the government resign, while an assembly is elected to rewrite a new constitution. Twenty-five citizens with no political affiliation were chosen, and the Constitutional Assembly started in February of 2011. So why is our mainstream media keeping this story out of the news? Well, maybe it's because the thought of a pots and pans revolution in the United States and true justice for those who break the law is a very scary thing for a corrupt government. I'm Gigi Arnetta with Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. And our final special report tonight shows you the potential dangers of using bitcoins. Beginning last week and culminating over the weekend, someone has stolen 96,000 bitcoins. At today's market rate, that's over $100 million stolen. It's not clear at this point whether Sheep Marketplace was the victim or the thief. Like Silk Road, Sheep Marketplace was set up to allow people to purchase black market items like illegal drugs anonymously using bitcoin. The theft was first reported at just over 5,000 bitcoins and now stands at 96,000. While Bitcoin users are anonymous, transactions are not. Just as someone marked the 23,000 Bitcoins the FBI seized from Silk Road, the Bitcoin community is hot on the trail of the thief who's trying to launder 96,000 Bitcoin. And you can watch the pursuit unfolding live in cyberspace. Someone in the UK has been in hot pursuit of the thief who he believes to be in the Czech Republic. And here's how he described it on Reddit. All day we've been chasing the scoundrel with our stolen Bitcoins through the blockchain. Around lunchtime, UK, I was chasing him across the roof of a moving train, metaphorically. I was less than 20 minutes or two blockchain confirmations behind Tomas. He was desperately creating new wallet addresses and moving his 49 retirement wallets through them, but having to wait for three or four confirmations each time before moving them again. Each time I caught up, I 666'd him. 0 .00666 bitcoins to mess up his lovely round numbers like 4,000. Then, all of a sudden, he was tumbling our stolen bitcoins a second time, and a tumbler is unbeatable. Unless, you guess which one it is? Nearly all the bitcoins belong to the person you're tracking. You jump in with him and get jumbled up through the same wallets using the same algorithm. I think he's asleep now in the Czech Republic. And when he awakes, he'll see my 666 next to his 96,000 stolen, freshly laundered bitcoins. Along with a lot of insults attached to fragments of bitcoins that I hope you're about to send here. For now, even though the thief is still anonymous, most of the stash has been identified, and people are tagging it on blockchain and commenting. Some comments are desperate, and as you can imagine, some comments are serious threats. As long as the stash is identified, he won't be able to spend it. But if he's able to launder the money through a tumbler, he's home free. So it's not likely that the thief will be found. And even if he were to be found, and someone used the rubber hose method of password retrieval on him, that person would likely keep all the coins. Perhaps because people are looking to Bitcoin for anonymity, they're more open to doing business with companies or individuals they know nothing about. So whether you're using Bitcoins or dollars, know who you're dealing with online. And if you're sending money to an anonymous drug dealer online, well, what do you expect? For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. And be sure to stay tuned after this break for my interview with printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson. And also we'll have a new report filed by Dan Badandi. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of 
of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. 25 years ago, Congress came up with a bright idea for the Undetectable Firearms Act. The rationale was that guns such as Glocks that have very few metal components could be easily slipped past security measures. Now, of course, Glocks are still being made and sold, so that didn't quite work out. And these gun-grabbing senators, congressmen, and these activist groups realized they can't take on the big gun lobby. So who did they redirect their efforts towards? You. The private seller, the private gun owner, the person who wants to make your own ammunition, the person who wants to print their own 3D guns. This targets you, and it goes beyond the Undetectable Firearms Act to the National Firearms Act, currently being pushed by the ATF. This will require that your photographs, your fingerprints, everything about you be sent to the ATF. Now, both these issues are going to come to a head December 9th, coming up very quickly. This is a very big and complex issue, but to talk about one particular aspect, the printable gun aspect, we're joined by printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson. Thanks for joining us, Cody. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Now, I have gave the brief setup about what's going on with the House, and I know this is something near and dear to your heart, so what is your thought about this December 9th deadline? Uh, well, I guess the deadline is convenient, um, because so far we haven't really worked up kind of like expanded version of this law. Uh, and so like faced with certain pressures, uh, the Democrats might compromise um, to their base and just go, go ahead and pass like a, you know, just an extension of the law. But my, my own conscience was a bit um, let down when I saw that no Republicans really stood up uh, or even provided opposition in the House for just renewing this law. In fact, only one Republican, only one member of the entire House of Representatives even was critical mm -hmm. uh, about passing this the other day. Now, Cody, we've been reporting on the National Firearms Act the ATF is trying to push through, and this is right along with that. You know, the ATF, they say they want your fingerprints, they want your, your photographs and all this and so forth. Also, for people who are involved with trust, uh, people who have silencers and so forth. So, you know, what's the, what's the grand scheme of this? You know, do you foresee a future, maybe one day, where people use printable guns in some type of trust or, you know, use the technology in that kind of way? Uh, that's, that's actually an interesting question. But um, I see two things at stake. So in the, in the broader firearms legislation context, sure, at, at the margin, at the corners, the, the ATF and Justice and everyone are, are trying to take away as, as many little things as possible that no large interest group is interested in, uh, like the old firearms imported from, uh, from North Korea or, yeah. or from South Korea, um, the old marksmanship program, and, and then some of the, the ATF, NFA trust stuff. Um, this is a way of affecting tiny groups of interests that, that don't really get enough like national attention to make anyone mad. Uh, the, the same thing is kind of happening with the, with the Undetectable Firearms Act, but the Senate is using it as an opportunity to, if, if possible, inject whole comprehensive new ways of, of mandating and, and regulating how we make guns with just the, the broad strokes of, uh, of a public safety concern. Exactly. Now, Cody, can you give us a brief synopsis? I know you've talked to us about this before, but for our new viewers, how does the printable gun technology work? Okay, sure, sure. So the, how, how Defense Distributed and other groups have advertised this is we use very simple uh, 
plastic uh, extrusion printers. So we, we melt up some plastic, which is in a filament, and we layer that plastic down layer by layer. Uh, and basically at the end of a process of laying down layers, you have a, a three-dimensional object. And um, what has concerned some of these politicians is that, oh, in the end, you don't need you don't need as many metal components as you thought you needed to make a functional firearm, even if this firearm is, is very impractical. And so they've taken the, the husk of this old law from the 1980s, which really never referred to anything, it was kind of a fake law, mm -hmm. uh, to use as a justification for inserting all new kinds of hooks into the future of gun manufacturing, and specifically the future of individual gun manufacturing. They can't, they're not powerful enough to, to take technology away from the manufacturers, but they feel that they're powerful enough to take technology away from you. That's exactly right, and I'm glad that you brought that up because it's much larger than just the printable guns. They're trying to tell you how you can make your firearms, and as you alluded to, you know they can't fight with, with Glock and Smith and Wesson, but they can take out guys like you, cut you off at the knees, and make sure you don't have an opportunity, a, a, a field to grow on. They don't want you to have that. And I know you've had uh, things such as the Liberator. What other new advances have been made in the printable gun field? Uh, the printable gun field uh, from Defense Distributed has been has been largely just kind of left alone. Now there's been a whole community of developers which have done variations of the Liberator and, and, and even gone beyond it. Um, there's a developer in Canada who did a kind of 22 carbine version of the Liberator. Um, there's guys like uh, this guy Proteus who has just kind of done all these kinds of different variations and semi-auto variations. So the world is still moving on. Uh, in the absence of Defense Distributed kind of more publicly getting, you know, attention for its developments. But I should say uh, the bigger kind of issue at, at the moment is that Eric Holder and Obama would like to write the regulations as to how you can legally manufacture a firearm. This is why it's so insane to me. That the and, they're, and they're also trying to tell you who a responsible person is. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Of you course. know, the people who are running fast and furious say, we'll tell you if you're responsible enough to own a firearm. Yeah, because look, because if Eric Holder has one concern, it's that the firearms don't get into the wrong hands, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he has a bridge he wants to sell you and everything else. Now, Cody, they, they'll say, you know, we brought this Cody Wilson guy on, and we talked about the printable guns, we talked about what's going on, but what are these solutions? Uh, man, the, the big solutions are this has to become a, a partisan issue. Like, it was great that Manchin Toomey was destroyed the way it was, uh, and that, like, the prevailing suspicions about the intentions of this administration against the Second Amendment kind of won. Um, I wish that this could happen again. This is just at its core another gun control pass, another effort at gun control kind of late in the year. And uh, I think the Republicans are just not willing to attach their political careers to something so risky because it doesn't end up affecting a manufacturer and the NRA is just kind of blah about it. So in the end, they only have to stand up for individual liberty uh, and they're not really keen to do that. That's exactly right, because we need guys like you, everybody who's interested in this type of field, and not just this field, but just technology in general. You want the advancement of technology. They're trying to tell you what you can do with your printable guns, and it can extend beyond that. It may start with printable guns, because you know, and I know, it always starts, you know, it's for the children, it's for our safety, and then they start here, then they take more and more and more and more and more. And talking about taking more, they're taking more of our money as well. And I know you're involved with Bitcoin, and you also have a project called The Dark Wallet. Oh, that's true, right. Yeah. Oh, Bitcoin's a game ender, by the way, right? Even if it's not the, the version of Bitcoin we have now, or even that particular protocol. But digital peer-to-peer -peer currencies are a game-changing, game-ending technology. And, uh, you know, like, it's, it's interesting and instructive and valuable to do, like, the 3D printed gun project, just as a way of kind of shaking up your imagination. But, like, uh, Bitcoin projects and ways of tackling the financial superstructure head-on are really going to quickly change how we interact with each other and how we take on uh, the federal government, specifically in the United States. It's going to go from a, a, a place where it says, uh, you shall and you shall not, to a place where it says, uh, well, please. You know, I think government will become much more polite because we have projects that are pro-privacy and pro-anonymity, which will basically siphon off people's activity away from using U.S. dollars and U.S. commercial banks, which are beholden to this Federal Reserve system, uh, toward a peer-to-peer toward -to -peer system, which is beholden to no one. Exactly. Now, Cody, I know there's been a lot of volatility in the Bitcoin market as of late, and people may be you know, a little hesitant to get involved in that. So you can tell us about what your campaign is about and also ease any concerns people may have about it. Oh, sure. Look, if you have, if you have concerns about this, this protocol, right, and, and the volatility in these markets, you need to you know, resolve yourself of those, and you, and you need to research and, and do that. And, and I'm not here to sell you on this currency, although I've been on Alex 
I've been on the show before to sell Bitcoin. By the way, I was selling it at fifty dollars back then. You know, you should have listened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Bitcoin, Bitcoin is useful in, as a kind of libertarian means of instruction. It's useful as an instrument uh, of resistance against the state, as a means of alternative uh, organization. It's not just a kind of financial Ponzi scheme that some people are making a lot of money on. Yes, it's happening. It really does provide an alternative way uh, of, of of doing things for yourself. So uh, it's just one available avenue. But I think in in the kind of like the, the panoply or like the, the toolkit of the digital libertarian, Bitcoin is very important and it's something that you should educate yourself about. Exactly. We need to educate ourselves not only about our firearms, but also about alternative currencies. Because I, I, anybody who's paying attention, you know, we see things that are going on in Cyprus and all over the world. You know, you don't want to be holding to this American dollar, have at least some type of backup. Uh, right. And that's almost, I mean, that's just kind of sound uh, investment advice in the day. Diversify, right? Well, why hold everything in, in, in U.S. denominated assets? Or, yeah, don't don't put everything under your mattress. Don't put everything in the bank because your house could burn down, the, the bank could get robbed and all that. Cody Wilson, do you have any final comments? Yeah, I'd say that this uh, this Undetectable Firearms Act renewal comes back up on Monday in the Senate. And so if you're like interested in the, the future of the Second Amendment at all, you should call these squishy GOP senators in the Senate and let them know your concerns because like they're going to let this pass unless people say something. So you have to contact your senator uh, if you're interested in the future of, of weapons development. Cody Wilson, Defense Distributed, thank you for your time, sir. Hey, thanks a lot. And as Cody was alluding to, this is the time for you to get involved in this fight. You can't just rely on Cody Wilson. You can't just rely on InfoWars. You can't just rely on Sheriff Mack. You just can't rely on gun owners of America. You need to get into this fight for yourself. Call your Senate office. Call your ATF office. If you can get a hold of Eric Holder, tell him, hey, man, this isn't, this isn't going to fly. People want our firearms. We don't want you sticking your nose into our business, telling us what we can and cannot have. Because like I said during the interview, it starts with something reasonable, it starts with something rational, or at least in theory, in their theory. You know, it's for the children, it's for your safety, then it takes take more and more and more and more and more. So if you don't want them to take it, you just say, come and take it. And you can go to the InfoWars shop and pick up the Come and Take It t-shirt. You can see it right there. We have many different styles, many different sizes. We have them for the ladies as well, the AKs, the ARs, all of it's right there. You can get the pink shirts for the ladies as well right there at the InfoWars shop. So that's going to be it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. Dan Bedanti for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we are about T-minus 15 minutes away from the official start of Black Friday, or what it looks like, the zombie apocalypse, or a live episode of The Walking Dead. As over a thousand people all lined up all around the building in 15 degree weather here in Rhode Island, all just to save a little bit of money on their Xboxes, iPads, and their electronic goods. But the question is, is it really worth waiting that long in line, freezing, just to get a couple of dollars off your favorite item. And uh, what products are you trying to get once you get in the store? Well, I was looking at the uh, Apple iPad 16 gigabytes for one nine, uh, no, for two ninety nine with a hundred dollar gift card back. How about you? Helping her. Yeah, she's <laughs> I'm here with a helping hand. I'm actually trying to get a tablet and a TV. A couple TVs. That's it. Uh, TVs. TVs. Socks and underwear. Socks and underwear. No TVs. No. Nope, DVDs, some pajamas. The iPad mini. A simple TV. I'm actually just here for the fun of it. They're trying to get, she's trying to get a TV, she's getting an Xbox, she's getting two tablets. Xbox One, video games. Yeah, I'm looking for an Xbox One. Try to get food. Clothes. 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 I'm basically going on a big shopping spree because Obama paid for everything. <laughs> And um, are you aware that retailers mock up the products months before Black Friday, then lower them to make you think you're getting a great deal? No, I was not. Yes, I am. It's just fun. And knowing that people would trample one another just to get a product for Christmas, what would you think they would do to get food if the economy was to crash tomorrow? Oh, uh, we'd be screwed. Think people would kill each other, riots? I think it would be World War III. They'd be screwed. <laughs> oh, they'd go crazy. They'd probably start eating each other. I just got to do it like the only days, you know what I mean? Go out and get it yourself. Whatever, you know? Be a man about it. 
Uh, queue a lot of people. Yeah. Did you get everything you wanted? I got everything I wanted, but you know, it, somebody stole my cart while I was going to try to get a GPS. Hey, what's up, man? Did you get everything you wanted? How you doing? Definitely. Hey, was it worth the hours in line? Absolutely. I got my PlayStation 4, man. Nice. Awesome. And um, was it chaotic in it? Definitely. Was it worth waiting all those hours in line? No. Not at all? Mm, no. Maybe. It was no, not at all. It's way too cold out. I have frostbite. Another Black Friday is now in the books, and the economy continues to plummet, but yet people still wait hours in line in the cold, spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars that they don't have on Chinese slave goods, just so they can say they got the Xboxes, the TVs, and the iPads just in time for Christmas. And this is Dan Badandi for the InfoWars Nightly News. The cogent rhetoric of revolution hung heavy in the air in the nation's capital overnight. There is one last thing to which the people can resort if the government does not uh, respect the, uh, the, the restraints that the Constitution places on the government. Abraham Lincoln talked about our, our right to uh, alter our government or a revolutionary right to overthrow it. And that is certainly something that no one wants to contemplate. That. The House Judiciary Committee heard from a panel of legal scholars on the constitutionality and legality of actions taken by the Obama administration, focusing on the feeble mandates and the Affordable Care Act and the enforcement of the short-sighted immigration laws. We have to repair a broken immigration system. And that this progress is only possible when we do it together. You can, if you can dispense with immigration laws or marijuana laws, or mandatory minimums, can you also dispense with election laws? I, I, again, I think we've, we've gone over this ground many times. Well, it's human. Let's please. do it one more time. Can the president suspend election laws? No. Why not? If he can suspend mandatory minimum and immigration laws, why not election laws? Because we live, we live in, a, uh, in, a, in a government of laws, and the president is bound to obey them and apply them. There was a fight with James I uh, about what was called the royal prerogative. Uh, it's very similar to what uh, President Obama is claiming, the right of the king to essentially stand above the law. The growing assertion of power by this president to do things to change laws, uh, that's not his responsibility. That's the Congress's clearly delegated responsibility to write the laws. But even with Obamacare, uh, his signature legislation, when he finds things in it that he doesn't like, he rewrites the law, even though the law itself doesn't give him any authority to do that. George Washington law school professor Jonathan Turley weighed in on the perishing of the legislative branch. Is that it's not only being circumvented, but it is also being denied the ability to enforce its inherent powers. Many of these questions are not close in my view. The president is outside the line. But it has to go in front of a court, and that court has to grant review. And that's where we have the most serious constitutional crisis I view in my lifetime. And that is this body is becoming less and less relevant. Clearly, a criminal administration is holding our highest seats of power hostage. When will the government of the people, by the people, for the people, wield the hammer of justice rather than simply discuss the laundry list of tyranny in the nation's capital? For the InfoWars Nightly News, John Bound reporting. <laughs> 